looking stylish as ever uh for those of you who are not able to see saint laurent you know stylish as ever how are you doing sir i'm good i'm, I'm good thanks um yeah it's, it's a hot day today very hot day and um uh, not a good day to wear black, I can tell you that much. Hey, I mean, it's yeah. the month of love, the day of love from a guy who's played in such a tournament. And now the boys come back with third place. You obviously, as a former player, must be feeling really good about yourself. Yeah, I'm actually jealous that they did so well. Um, I mean, I think it's been decades since uh, South African fans have been uh, wanting to see the quality of the final And I think uh, this tournament actually is showed us that uh, we are actually a good team um, and we belong in that space and I think um, with what happened I, can, we can, I think we can only really grow and I think also it, it calls also for the people that are in charge of stuff as well to, to help us push this vehicle going forward I mean we need we need the, uh, the people that make decisions to help the team to become better uh, to help the coach to be able to assess and and then have a, a bigger pool of players to be able to to pick from because I can I can just imagine with all the South African players that we have on the pitch if we had three or four experienced players from overseas I'm sure we could have won the tournament I'm definitely sure but I'm very proud of the team very very proud of the okay as in doing let me go overseas let me you know they've seen me in the global stage yeah. was the thought of overseas back then did it did that ever come to mind yeah I mean. The overseas thought always this was always in my mind, uh, even from super sport days, even when I was still playing in, uh, in the lower division days. It's, it's always been on my mind. I think it was the driving force for me. And uh, to, to to look at the guys, I'm sure there's guys that are, are having such conversations from the Bafana Bafana team. That's speaking of overseas movement and also maybe also uh, being aware as to then how them people actually reacted to their performances. I think. Uh, Everybody speaks about McQueen, everybody speaks about Ronald and Williams. Um, uh, we can go on and on, depending on who you ask. Everybody has some, something nicer to say about uh, different players. Uh, but of course, uh, it's, it's also up to, to the teams. I understand that when, when people want the play, other players to go overseas, but we sometimes we don't understand the difficulties of that happening, mm. uh, the dynamics of that happening. Because you say, I'm a son, my best player, just because you want to see him overseas. So now, what about my ambition as a team? But also what about the ambitions of a footballer? So it becomes a very tricky situation. But I just hope that within the players that we had in AFCON, some, something must happen, something must give. Mm. Growing up watching you uh, as a footballer in, in the midfield, I think. Am I that old, man? Yeah, I, I don't think, <laughs> I think our generation. I, I think future generations will yeah. mold their game on you. And Thank you. Your, 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 your nickname, the general. I mean, yeah, yeah. you dictated the midfield. It, if I have a question for you, it would, it would be just how important is it to be a leader in the midfield for for your, your teammates yeah. and to, to net play together? Yeah. I think also it, 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 for me personally, because the way that I was playing, I I understood my responsibility first. Uh, my responsibility was to help the team function. Irrespective of the scoreline, um, I, the team has to function. When the coach looks at the team, the team has to function. And I need to find solutions. I can't go back to the coach and, and give excuses. And uh, and that's the responsibility that comes being a leader. I don't have to wear an armband for me to become a leader on the pitch. But understanding the role and position that I was playing, understanding the responsibility that comes with it, of course at times it made things a little bit easier for me, but it was very difficult because it's a responsibility that nobody can teach you. You learn as you go, you make mistakes. Sometimes you, you play in a way that other players around you, they think that you're only playing for yourself. But they only realize once you're not there, the importance of you being on the pitch. So, so it's one of those things that once you understand and understand the role that comes with being that guy in the midfield, because we don't have to, you know, you know, you know, you, used to, you know, the importance of number 10, right? Yeah. You used to like love number 10, mm -hmm. and just being given the jersey on its own, it, it says something to you. Yeah, there's a responsibility, but I know I understand that that's, that's a number that we don't pay, we don't respect it anymore. Yeah. But but I was the player that was wearing that number in that midfield. You get to understand that there is a significant role that I need to play in that midfield to help the team play, irrespective of now. Now to PSL, it's resuming. Yeah. Uh, two of your clubs are playing against each other. Uh, 
you know, you've played for both clubs and you've won history. What do you think is, is, is going to happen this weekend? I think it's a question that everybody's left, right? Because half of Mamdou mm. Sundown's players were participating in AFCON. Mm. Um, but we all have seen how uh, our Sundowns rather has been performing in the last couple of months. Um, with all the, the, the quality players that they have there. Their roster. I think uh, this 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 will be a game that actually are tested, and maybe also Coach Lani will have an idea as to does he really really have quality that mm -hmm. everybody speaks about? Because then these are the players that need to go and play with other pirates. And with other pirates, there was only uh, two or played two or three players that went mm -hmm. to Afcon. Uh, maybe only one played. No, it actually is my hope that played more. Other guys, they didn't play much, yeah. so they will be fresher to come and actually play. So it'll be a very interesting challenge, and I think it's a game also that is uh, that has more eyeballs in the last two, three, four years. It, it's becoming bigger and bigger. Prize for the Sundowns, it becomes a talking point, mm. and uh, it'll be very interesting to see. I don't want to be in the Tim Gosses' lost shoes because I know how it feels. It's not a nice feeling mm. because then. Um, Depends if Fulano Pirates fans forgive him. If Fulano Pirates fans want to see him play, then it will be a good day for Lodge. But if they don't, it's going to have a, yeah, a difficult day because they'll be booing him, they'll be doing all this uh, funny stuff. But I just hope that it's not the case because um, as fans, we've grown, man, we've matured, we understand certain things happening. So it'll be a very interesting game. But I think. Um, it's also a game that uh, London Pirates might take an opportunity to close the gap because as much as we're still excited about Afcon, we still have we still um, people actually forgot that Memphis Sundowns haven't lost the game in two years, mm -hmm. and they they are their record they're breaking every game that they play. There's there's a record that they're trying to break, and it's ridiculous. And also to see the number of players that are playing in Afcon from Memphis Sundowns, it's ridiculous. And and I think uh, it's uh, it's it's about time that. We, we step back a little bit and appreciate what Sundance has been doing for the country, for, for, for football, because if you have a better team that participate in, in in Africa against top, top, top teams, you get to AFCON, it's not, it's not new to you, it's a space that you're used to. And I think when, 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 when Bayern Munich was at the top of their game, um, Germany went on to win the World Cup, when Spain, Spain they went on to win the World Cup, so Sundowns is on top of the game. They play Champions League football every every year. Look at the Bafana team. Mm -hmm. It was a problem when everybody saw the lineup, like a lot of Bafana players, but, but now nobody speaks about it. Nobody speaks as one team, and that's what we need. And then I'm saying that like, on the weekend, I'm sure the players that never went to the AFCON, they want to play for the national team. They want to play for national because they understand now the importance that will be preaching all along, the importance of playing for national team. And I think this weekend is not going to give us anything short of greatness. And I think um, I'm, in the, I'm anticipating a good game. You, Lodge, and you two share in a similar fashion that you moved across uh, clubs. My twofold question is, I'm sure you've scored against your fellow club, Orlando Pirates. Never. Mm. Never? Never. Okay. He's going to work against everyone but Paris. But as Lodge, if he scores, does he celebrate? Would you celebrate? I would. I would celebrate because the game of football, it's, it's, it's about those moments. Why would I? I mean, I'm training. I'm training so hard to go and play for this game. And being part of the game, if I don't want to play, there's somebody else I can take my space. But for the fact that I'm there and I'm scoring, why am I not celebrating? Because... I'm celebrating. What about the respect? You know, but I'm, but I, but I'm getting paid. I'm, I'm at the current job, so my biggest focus is here. It's like what if me and you? If if I'm saying like I was in a in a relationship with Roxanne, I don't. Then I bump into Roxanne, being with another guy. Why must I say hi to him? I mean, I don't know. Exactly. Like, I, so, I guess you'd say hi either way. No, so <laughs> um, keep it moving. But I but I understand that. that um, uh, what how people actually feel about their own clubs, but I've I've never been into that situation. I've I've moved to Orlando Prize, played uh, against Super Sport, and, and I scored and I celebrated. Like wow. uh, for me, it never even came like if I score, what will happen? But understanding how fans, how both fans actually react, but for me, I would I would want him to be him. Wow. Just just don't miss the moment because it, it might not come. The feeling that he might have on Saturday, if he doesn't 
I acknowledge it, that feeling might not come ever, ever again. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You made that move just like Lodge. Yeah. Like, can you tell us how, just how different the, the environment is going from Sahara Pirates to Mamluri Sundowns? I mean, yeah. they are a Titanic team, you know, challenging at the top of the African game. Yeah. So, yeah, can you just tell us about that? I think the, the, the most challenging thing would be uh, the obsession of football that is happening in Sundowns, because then it's a culture shock. Because, but also to be fair, I don't know how Orlando Pirates has been operating. But way back then, it was like any other team two hours of training and then you go home. So you've got so much time in your hands. When I moved to Sandman's, it felt like a nine to five, bro. Like you get there, there's a video session, there's this, there's this, there's this. By the time you're done, you're so exhausted. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, you're stuck in traffic. And in the morning, when you're going to training, you're stuck in traffic yeah. as well. But when you start winning, you understand the, the importance of those type of video sessions, and then you become appreciative of those. So I think with with Lodge, depending on what is it exactly that he wants to achieve, and how quickly he wants to acclimatize and adjust to the team, I think that's important because then it's totally different when you're playing against Sundowns than when you are actually playing for Sundowns because then there's there's a lot of habits that you need to change in terms of how you play because you need to fit into the system of like oh, no, let's not so he's a talented player I mean, no, no lie about that would he be able to fit into the system i think he can if he wants to and 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 the the, the sooner he does it and i think mom lady sundowns fan they'll, they'll accept him because they need to accept you first yeah, they know football mom lady sundowns fans so they they want to see you until once they accept you they'll give you a nickname so i think you is it for a challenge competing in the same position as the Timbers one is of this world? He needs to compete. He's from a team that he wasn't challenged this position. Yeah. So it's a new, new environment for him. Is he strong enough? Does he have the character to, to keep going? I think those are the, uh, the questions that uh, he himself can really answer. But I'm excited for him. Um, yeah, there's an opportunity to win silverware because as footballers, you want to also win silverware and uh, to continue again to be named amongst the top players in the country because at some point he was and let's be fair he hasn't been in the last three four years and there's an opportunity for him to actually bring back the you know the the display that is shown and i think with the right place in front of you the right players around you like they say the sky's the limit <laughs> to your personal life and, mm. um, do you must play football are you are you are you trying to get into socially and yeah and also how's joining Hollywood bets as an ambassador okay um the, the transition wasn't wasn't easy at all it was difficult in the beginning because i'm i'm actually entering into this new world that i don't have any idea of but i within that space i know exactly what is it that i want to do but at times being a footballer we were never in boardrooms so we never got to meet the ceos and the coo so i'm meeting these people after playing football but and then and then also what helped me was adjusting to what the world required at the time i didn't want to be a coach and i knew that from the jump that i don't want to be a coach but also what i liked was i want to do things that i like um, at some point i said i'll only retire when football becomes it started to feel like a job and once it started to feel like i retired and i want to do things that i like i don't want to do things that i feel like it is a job because then then I'll have all the excuses in the world to do it properly. So, so after retiring, I started doing what I like. I didn't realize that I like um, being a pundit in super sport. I actually love the game so much that I'm obsessed with the game. So I speak about it, I play. Um, yeah, I used to play socially. I get kicked a lot, so I stopped playing. Yeah. It's not nice. It's, it's yeah, it's not nice anymore. Um, and then uh, joining World Bet, I think it was. Uh, it was. I think it was a game changer for me. Game became changer in the sense that uh, now I look like I'm more popular than I was when I was playing. I don't think that's you possible. Know? And, um, and yeah, but with a big brand as well, that's being able to do all the things, the great things that we've been doing. I think it was amazing. And also for for me personally, I look at I look at how other footballers now that are still playing, how they actually look at my transition. It actually gives them hope because all of us were traumatized before. Nobody wants to retire because we're so scared of retiring. We think in the world, it's not kind to us after retirement. And I think with the transitions, with all the things that I'm doing, I'm sure other guys that are coming after me, they they might even do better than me. Well, it's to foundation, you know, yeah. they go 
not only a footballing legend, but the man himself looking out and caring for everybody and Hollywood bets. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Uh, yeah. me, sir. Cool. Thank you.